build biology. We got a good build today. So good, in fact, that it brought all the other guys outside the office and in the garage. It's supposed to be just me and the builder, but it's not the case because this guy builds insanely clean cars. What is everybody doing? Uh, What's up, man? Uh, dude, sorry, sorry to crash the party. My boy brought a car last second. Oh, thank Thanks, you. man. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get out of the way. Yeah, get out of here. Let you guys do your thing. Sorry, sorry. I'm Honda boying out now. Oh God, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay. And obviously, cut. What's up? Do you out. even get to have the name Y2K right now? No, that's, uh, I don't know, man. It's up to him. He's the authority. <laughs> All right, man. How's What's it up? going? What How up? Are you? Good to see you. This is Ryan, Rywire. Dude, what'd you bring us? All right, this is an AP1 S2000, and this is owned by my friend and uh, client, Angel Ramos. He told me, you know, I want to do, I want to do a, a body kit on this thing and I want it to be something special. I'm not a body kit guy at yeah. all, you know what I mean? And for me to, to do something wild, I really have to like kind of tone it down. Yeah. I've seen plenty of S2000s, nothing like this, nothing this wide. Yeah. I mean, I've seen guys attempt right. and, and do like, you do know, over flares kits and, and, yeah, and stuff course. like that, but it just, I'm with you on that. I, I respectively like there, there's the a stock line. body lines. Yeah. I enjoy yeah. stock body lines and that's a kit has to be well carried out and, of course. and this one is. So let, let's talk about what you have on it. Yeah, man, we just, we just ended up with some 12 inch wide wheels in the back and some 10 inch wide wheels in the front. And Dude, look at how wide just this thing is. It? Trying to get the thing to, to look like it's not as wide as it is, you know? And really, like, I saw it when you were pulling up. The rear wheels was just like, wow, these are insane. Yeah, that car barely fits in my trailer. This is an authentic uh, Japanese Mugen kit. Um, Angel sourced this kit and I could only imagine it was seven to 10,000 bucks. Like, I'm not really sure, but <laughs> I know they're extremely hard to get. Uh, it's kind of a priceless item, something that, that mm -hmm. people don't destroy. And I wouldn't call this destroying it, but we certainly cut it. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's a carbon front bumper, carbon rear bumper, and some added pieces along the way underneath, splitters and stuff like that. So yeah, we started there. Then second was we started with the wheel sizing. There are 12, 12 in the back, 10 in the front, from what I remember, 20 offset on both. And um, he said, these are the wheels I want to use. Yeah. They literally had none left in the United States. And we ended up special ordering them. It took a while to get, but man, it really, really, they really work on the car. I love them. Um, yeah, so we, we test fit them and we're like, okay, this kit has to be, you know, this much wider, you right. know what I'm saying? I so mean, we when just- When you look at it from the rear even, just yeah. with a stock body like You can kind of see, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Just how much wider it actually so, is. So let me tell you, it's not like we just bolted that on there. So mm -hmm. my buddy Cody from Casale Design, he actually um, jumped in and said, you know what, I'm, I'm down to make a kit, make this wider, make these wheels fit. And I said, listen, we need to do this the most simple way we possibly can. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to keep the streamlines of the body. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like the factory line right here. Right. And I really don't like it car carrying all the way down. It just makes it look like it has yeah. a really fat ass on the back. Cody decided to build a cap right here. And this is a carbon bumper as well as the front. So this piece is actually carbon. So it's all carbon yeah. fit. Wow. We made it all out of clay. This body line actually took a hike. It was gone, hmm. you know? And I'm like, we need to have the OEM lines on this car. Yeah. That was a huge thing for me and you know. So, th so this at that point was just smooth. Oh yeah, it, it ended up just kind of being getting lost. So they're bringing you know? the clay to yeah, bring clay, the body line let's back. let's bring it back. So this is like a cap basically. Mm -hmm. So we kind of continued down and I was like, okay, there's no proper skirt that's just gonna fit this car. If you look at a stock S2000, this, this lies there. You know, it's, yeah. it's, this is very much accentuated sure. uh, on the rear too. See how it kind of mm -hmm. comes like that. Um, we also needed to be able to remove the side skirt, yeah. you know? So it was really important that we cut straight, cut straight and had a way to fit everything together. So there's a lot of custom like wizardry that Cody did back here where it's like, you know, form fitted pieces that bolt on yeah. and things stack over each other. So there's no hardware. Mm. You can see kind of the punch out in the body line. That's what's really yeah, cool to me. Exactly. So from, that from whole, here to there, you see the stock body line following with the door. Yeah. It's really cool. Had to keep that. And it just makes it, it gives it that depth too for how wide it actually is from the factory. Right. So it's punched out another man, four inches. <laughs> yeah. And what trips me out is when he was 
designing this skirt, it was literally just like a plank of wood. Mm -hmm. And then he started just gluing pieces of wood to the car. Yeah. It was crazy to see that super raw turn into this amazingly crafted skirt. Continuing on, we actually used an aftermarket fender, mm -hmm. kind of just used just the outer brim of it. Mm -hmm. And then just there again, popsicle sticks and wood and <laughs> yeah. make it work and clay and everything, you know. It's just amazing to see the final product and how smooth everything yeah, is. Yeah, everything is out. real smooth. All the body lines, I mean, they're just perfect. Yeah, yeah. In the front, we were looking at it and we're like, God, I mean, it's already like this smiley face looking car, exactly. right? So yeah. this whole piece right here was just literally shaped out of clay you know, mm -hmm. and then smoothened and then, and then attached and then molded on. That's really cool. So it was just like, if you looked at it straight on, it was just like this big wide, like of nothing. Yeah. So that, that little arrow splitter really, really helped. Yeah, it really breaks it up to your eye a bit mm -hmm. rather than just a flat piece. And I mean, this whole kit has to be designed um, symmetrical on both sides, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it was a lot of like, <laughs> back and yeah. forth like does yeah. it look right uh, and so. i mean maybe a professional designer would have done half and then they would have lasered it and yeah. they would have like doubled it yeah um you know like i'm talking like oem status right one thing going back to just the, from the rear for me yes. it's just to see an aggressive car yes what you were saying about the back there i love seeing the tire yeah i definitely that's something wanted. that when you see from the rear then you kind of can you can tell like wow all right this thing means business because yeah Cause you got massive tires back there, 315 in the rear, right? 12 inch wide wheels, which you never see on an S2000. Yeah, they're just overkill, man. And then poking out just a little bit to see the tire just shows you how aggressive it, it actually will be. Yeah, and, and if you guys are familiar with the Mugen wing, yeah, uh, this actually from factory, the, the Mugen design is much different and it goes all the way to here. Mm -hmm. We just really like wanted to modernize it. So what we ended up doing is actually building these custom. The wing looks great. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, we really modernized it. This is really subtle and nice. Thank you, and yeah. it fits beautiful. Yeah, thank I you. Think, and of course with Mugen anyway, it fits that trim so nice in the back. Uh -huh. Leaving the third brake light. So yeah, we, we kept the uh, AP1 headlights and tail lights. Mm -hmm. well, Overall, the outside is stunning. Thank you. And I mean, normally we just go to the interior, but look, it's convertible. Yeah. That's 2000. We're already in the interior from the outside. Exactly. So the first thing I notice, obviously, fabricator, the cage. Yeah, of the course. The cage is wild, man. It looks really cool. Yeah, we had to keep it, we had to keep it super low profile. We have a nice carbon top for this car mm -hmm. and it does clear. Even the roof line of it, you, like, you can see what yeah. it would actually be. That so is tucked up there pretty dang it well. It is, it's tight up into so the carbon roof. I'm sure with the roof on it, it fits really, really yeah, tight. Yeah, so. it's, it's just right there, man. And I love, it, even this bend right here, that's wild for a main hoop. Yeah. Where it comes back out. Very, very typical of my builds. We always do custom paneling. Yeah. We did all custom sheet metal, dimple die theme and bead rolled and stuff like that. So I got with him and I'm like, this is how we should make it. He had ideas and I think it came out really cool. Like if you look in the inside, you notice there's a dimple die theme. Yeah. So this whole, you know, this is where the, this is where the soft top would go. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So we ended up just, they, had, they, they just made these custom crazy pieces. And I mean, it's really, really there's detailed. There's multiple bends. In yeah, that. there's I multiple mean, bends, multiple. It, it's really cool. It, this piece is extremely hard to make too in the back. I mean, yeah. the whole and mold rolled and rolled how, it's, how it secures. And it's like the, pro the order of putting everything together. I literally spent a day just after, after everything was coated and assembling this whole thing. It was like, it was like eight hours worth of work. Yeah. Just and putting it all in. old finish there. Yeah, yeah. That's so really nice. the dimple dies, you know, it's kind of got this like large to small dimple die kind of yeah, design. Yeah, starting in the So middle, here, and then it does it here. And then if you get a glimpse, really hard to see, but under <laughs> oh, yeah. there, we got the same kind of dimple die from big in the center to smaller. Oh yeah. That's and then cool. that continues out to the cowl, right? Yeah. So you got that real cool dimple die theme. And then even into the bay, we could talk about that later. Yeah. So we wanted to keep it we really wanted to keep it kind of an OEM feel, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, you know? Like, I wasn't really big on, on doing anything wild. Th this is a race car for him, you know? Like, I, I wanted to build it really, really clean. I wanted it to be of, like, SEMA build quality. I wanted it to be good enough for, you know, the Hoonigan, right? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to, to appreciate it. So, it's got to have that track feel for yep. sure. Just keeping things simple, I think, in the in the interior was the way to go. So, the car seats. Yeah, I mean, you got to have the race seats. You got to really have nice. proper. Man, they're really tall. 
They, they are. They're pretty big seats. <laughs> the, they, they're like really said, narrow, but they're very tall we have seats. Some, we have some rails that'll make it go a lot lower, mm -hmm. and that'll be better for him when he's uh, ready to drive the car. Let's talk about the dash. Okay, so that's an AIM dash, and it's communicating with an AEM Infinity ECU. Okay. So okay. over CAN, you got your four wires, and it you know shows all the data that the ECU sees. Yeah. We added a bunch of sensors on the engine loom. It's so flush tucked in there. Yeah. You did a really good job cutting um, that in. Yeah, uh, Belade Sports actually makes that, that plate. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice lay-in specifically made for an S2000. Really you can cool. still get the ports on the sides. You have uh, Mugen steering wheel. Yeah, so Angel is a big uh, kind of JDM connoisseur. Mm -hmm. It's funny because he's, he's into the Mugen, he's into the, you know, all the authentic Japanese stuff, uh, but then he wants it wide and crazy. So it was an interesting blend, you know? Looking forward into it, it's just all business. I mean, yeah. You have the cage and the motor to let you know. You yeah. Run a hoodless right now. Exactly. So we decided to not run carpet in it, you know, just some floor mats for now. You know what? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I personally just like that feel. Um, yeah, just the floor mats. That's all you need. Anything else you want to show off in here? Or you um, want to move on to the engine bay? I guess we can, on the other side, I can show you real quick just how, like, you know, the wires are all hidden through and. Because this would be your forte here. Of course. And you got the AEM Infinity right there. Oh, yeah, just real really nice. simple, just mounted. Mm -hmm. Where is everything? It's just all gone. It's all up under it's there. It's all tucked. Yeah. So yeah, for, for this car, we just used um, kind of the factory under dash loom. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of built the AEM Infinity uh, wiring harness into it. Yeah. So there's not like any PDM or any crazy you know stuff going on with that. But we just kept it very simple. It didn't need that. You yeah. Know? Um, everything was everything was clean. This car had low miles. Like, why touch it if it's not broken, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's very clean. Looks really nice in there. And Ooh. again, from the doorway, look at how wide that skirt is. Yeah. Like you really have to be aware when that's you're insane. when you're stepping out of the car. Yeah. You know? So you don't as step any, on like, it. If you have like you know like race cars always have splitters and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's just as wide as that. So you really have to. That are like an old vet with Laker pipes. Right. Don't exactly. Burn your legs, sort of <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. We don't even have to pop the hood. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Pop it's the hood for you. Obviously, very stunning, very clean. Yeah, thank you. So, this engine, um, it is a 2.2 from the AP2 block. Mm -hmm. It was sent to BC Moto. And BC ended up doing a full buildup on the engine for us. All his, you know, all his choice parts. We um, did a stroker setup, and is it is uh, 2.5 roughly right now. 2.5 liter displacement. Wow. It's 14 and a half to one compression. Oh my so it really can only run on E85 yeah. or you know, yeah, high comp fuel. So and as we heard you pulling in on the cold start setup. Yeah, Zach yep. was proud of the chop. <laughs> yep. like, oh man, for yep. a four cylinder. But so BC. Beezy's a bad man. Yeah, man. So he went through. <laughs> he went through the whole thing. He used his spec, um, you know, pistons, rods, everything, all his spec design stuff. And we pretty much just said, you know what, man, just bring us back something that'll make over 300. He's like, cool. So we just went through it. And I don't even need to. I don't even need to know what, what's going on as far as you know what 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 rods and pistons and yeah. whatever. I just left it all up to him, and he brought us something perfect. So. Um, um, Individual throttle bodies. Yeah, so these are secondaries. Right, so these are Kinsler ITBs, but uh, we used some ID1000s in the port. Okay. And then we used another set of ID1000s in the atmosphere. Yeah. So how the system works is at high RPM, and it's looking like we're not 100% done tuning yet. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, just, we're making great power for where we're at. It's like, it's like just under the 300 horsepower mark right mm -hmm. now. So we should be just a little over the 300 horsepower once we get those secondaries on. So okay. we're, what we're doing is around 7,000 RPMs, these bad boys are going to come on, give us a little bit more fuel. Because okay. what we saw is that the duty cycle is actually almost up on E85 with this displacement, how much fuel this engine requires. So ID1000s are almost out of fuel. So we literally need these. Just as a backup. Yeah. And you know, um, the atomization properties of doing a top feed setup like this is actually really cool. And the pers and you do see a little bit of a horsepower percentage increase just because they atomize on the opposite side of the throttle bodies, okay. right? Yeah. So when the fuel sprays in, that like velocity of, of charge really helps. So even though, you know, these are these are about out of out of, you know, they're about yeah. out of duty. 
these will come on and really change the, the atomization properties and it sure. it adds about 3%. And it so, just looks wicked cool. Yeah, and that's that was the thing. Like, you know? All I could picture in my head right now is wanting to set up like a GoPro or something right oh, here. Oh yeah, and just on have the, track the and just watch these spring. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see how injectors. it's going at full throttle, you know? Yeah, super, super cool. It's gotta be something special. It gotta be so something. So that's when we got with Kinsler and I'm like, you know, let's let's do this top feed setup. And the funny part is they actually were like, oh, we're we're discontinuing that design. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no way. Like sell me the raw parts. Yeah. So I believe we actually, I actually ended up cutting those stays um, on a CNC just ourselves. Oh, okay. So we just had those done. My buddy Chris from uh, Wisecraft actually did a lot of cool little bits on this car for us. And um, up here we actually, this is a kind of a custom line that I just started and it's all the little titanium parts. Okay. So all these little fasteners, mm -hmm. it's kind of under the, the name Rye Tie. So, uh, you know, dude, yeah, it's like a, on that. wow, it's really nice. Yeah, man. So we did, we did this custom. All the fasteners. Yeah. All the fasteners are all kind I of titanium. I don't want to lean on it, but I want to lean That's over okay, it. That's okay, dude. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's really cool. And then we did, we entered right here with one of our wiring looms and custom autosport connector. So to keep That's it the motorsport theme. Gorgeous. And then the plumbing. So a lot, this is like. It's funny that I, I saved this until so late, but one of the biggest things, of course, the top feed injection is what people notice the most, but second is the motorsport plumbing. Mm -hmm. So this is XRP HS79 plumbing. Mm -hmm. um, they're one of our partners in a lot of the cars that we do. Proper, proper motorsport cars are using this, this performance plumbing. It's super flexible. The inner diameter is a lot bigger than like that, you know, kind of like China compliant hose that you that yeah. you find so often. So I just, I really spent a lot of time plumbing this car and it, it was literally a couple days of just like thinking and trying to do this as clean as humanly possible. It had to be functional mm -hmm. and it has to look good. So. And it, it matches like. Of course. Very well. I like, love the color of it. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's bring the color out real quick. So um, if you guys have seen my Civic uh, EAT, which is a 86 hatchback, um, it's running. Cut to that real quick. So this is actually, you know, exactly the theme as far as the color, the color of the valve cover, the plumbing, the throttle bodies. It's very, very reminiscent of my Civic. I kind of surprised him on that. And when he saw it, he just loved it. He thought it was totally cool. Massive radiator. Yeah. So this is one that I actually designed just to be as huge as possible. And then we got a cool little oil cooler in the front, like a CSF uh, oil cooler in the front there. Kind of trick mounted. Yeah, down here. Yep. That's big too. Yeah, it's big, man. <laughs> big oil cooler, big radiator. Oh, the other side, yeah. Start here in the front somewhere. This car was completely torn down 100% just on like a cart. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So we painted, we painted the entire car with not a nut and bolt and arm and bracket on it, right? Mm -hmm. When everything was off, I literally took the time to change every bolt, re-zinc every single thing. Control arms were got all, you know, powder coated, just coating like, this is not actually a, a new subframe, but it is a completely restored subframe. So you get to pull out you know, every so single everything bolt, powder -zinc coated, yeah. re-zinced, um, and then you could see like full spherical upgrade. Mm -hmm. So Blade Sport had a, that's had really a nice. full deal for us. So we just put everything that we could oh, in. Wow, that's a big joint there too. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's all uh, it's all done to their specs. New suspension, new knuckle setup. You know. What's up with the knuckle setup? So it's all, um, it's all, a it's all, it's all OEM, just mm -hmm. completely re-disassembled, new pieces, you know, purchased, new dust shields purchased, powder coated. This car, I think this chassis had around like 50,000 miles on it, mm -hmm. but we really just wanted it to be like a brand new car. And it looks, I mean, it's gorgeous, so. Thank you. Fuel pressure regular down here? Yeah, a little kind of hidden, but still accessible. You can get to the nut on top. and. Mm -hmm. The uh, pressure sensors fitted for the ECU. Oh, the lines look really nice too. Yeah, really they're well tucked, stainless. Yeah, so I stainless bent a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm trying to follow that. <laughs> I, it's fu it's funny because uh, wow, it's insane up there. Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy with the ABS. I like all stuff. the bulkheads going up too. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time there. 
factory lines are properly bent, so mm -hmm. it's like, oh, let's just put a, you know, put a nut and sleeve on and yeah. plumb the lines and find a nice place to mount the regulators and change the hardware and use, yeah. use what we can. I didn't even see that from above, so it's a really nice spot. Right, 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 right. It looks right. really clean underneath. It's yeah. nice and accessible. Keeps it clean. Mm -hmm. House port mounts and brackets and everything. You know, I had to upgrade while everything's out. There's no sense in, you know, changing it. And th is that all urethane? Yeah, it's a urethane. Gotcha. It's a urethane with a uh, billet CNC mount and mm. then a metal bracket. So the exhaust is a blade sport, um, kind of a custom, custom size design for our big displacement engine. Mm -hmm. But um, it's one of their, one of their headers. And then my, my buddy Chris from Wisecraft made a full aluminum exhaust and then it stainless? goes- Stainless? Yeah, sorry, stainless. And then it goes all the way back to a uh, titanium muffler. So basically right at the, at the coupler joint, like one side's stainless, the other side's titanium. Gotcha, so over here so would it's be just titanium? Yeah, titanium on that That's side. Tip. It's kind of hard to see. Yep. Man, there's some really good craftsmanship here, the guys. Yeah, he's a talented guy, man. Very talented welder, look at that, it's good stuff. All the little like really brackets nice and hangers and everything, he just, he made it really accessible for us. Yeah. To get to everything. It's really well tucked. It's yeah, above it's the frame a, rail. It's got to hang up tight. The it's wire looks really good, centered. Yeah, he put his little nice. logo in the middle <clears> there. <throat> yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Always like a little touch like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's and really then, nice. Even the hangers too. It's, yeah. Cool, I'll stay in this and His hangers are cool. Yep. Our goal is to touch the diff. We wanted to change it, um, but it's just a stock one for right now. Mm -hmm. It seems to be holding up. We got some little bit beefier axles in there. What would be the plan if you could change it up? Um, I don't know, probably just an internal upgrade. I okay. don't think it needs like too terribly much. Because they're pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like it's going to hold well for us. Um, you know, I mean, we just we just upgraded what we could with the mounts. See the mounts, yeah. Are, yeah. Wow, those are beefy, man. Yeah, the mounts <laughs> are all done. So. All of the bolts are replaced. Yeah. Because you pulled both subframes. That's what you're talking right, about right. before. So, so you pulled else, everything down. Like literally, this subframe just. I mean, you know, I'm I'm used to doing like uh, front wheel drive Hondas, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was just like a dream. I was like, oh man, this is so cool. You just drop this whole thing down. <laughs> go work on it. Yeah. Put the gas tank on top. Doing all my plumbing. And just stuff. like a front wheel drive Honda. Mm -hmm. Like you know what? We'll pull the motor. Basically, you just pull the car off the top of it. Yeah. You just it's, do, it's, undo a couple bolts and then lift that thing up yeah, and pull and it out. When we were putting it, I built these little carts. You know, just like little caster deals, right? Yeah. And I just put like the whole subframe on that side, the whole the whole drivetrain on that, and I literally like- Just dropped it on from the lift? Yeah, the lift just boom, and everything just kind of lined up. That's a really good idea. And then suspension-wise, what we got going on? Version threes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's some good stuff there. Those axles do look beefy. That's yeah. just factory, huh? It is factory, but they're beefy, man. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's actually some slight upgrade to them. Um, I think that they make, they make an internal adjustment. Uh, an interesting thing that the S2000s have is like, there's, they're, like when you lower them, you need like a spacer between here. Mm -hmm. But in these axles, the spacers are actually built in. Yeah. So they, they do make some adjustments. And I don't know that they're like physically beefier, but they are upgraded because of that. And the internals are, are, are beefier than stock. Awesome. So it's kind of like a factory upgraded design. And then we have the StopTech um, trophy kit on there for the brakes. Those are massive. Yeah, they're really, really cool. You can see in there. Man, those brakes are huge. Yeah. But they have to be because look at how big this wheel is. Just stopping the rotating mass of this yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? It's the size of my entire arm, a 315. 315, yeah. It just looks so, I'm gonna get some depth perception on that. It's how wide those rear wheels are. Yeah. It's like you took the back of a Viper and put it on. I know, right? That's <laughs> 2000. It. Yeah. That's so cool. Let's take a look at the brakes up front here too. Look at how big these D's are all stainless lines. I know the wiring too. I was looking at it and I was like, it's so clean up there. You can hardly even see anything. Yeah, yeah. Everything's so nice and tucked away. Yeah. Which I guess is I your forte. Say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's very minimal stuff up here too. Yeah, just so that's to, just for the steering then. Yeah, it's just the steering stuff. Yeah, so really not too much coming forward other than that. Not too much, just like headlight stuff kind of coming forward and then... Um, Where is that stuff, up here? Yeah. And that's all, it's, kinda, it's just run through this one small wire, huh? Yeah. yeah. A small loom? I just, uh, yeah, I just rebuilt that section. I didn't really like, we didn't like recreate, you know, too much with it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We just kept it minimal, simple and just kind of, you know, re-wrapped re it all up and just, just 
kept what was already there. Yeah. There was no sense in like rebuilding the entire car's wiring loom, you know? Yeah. So you mind just... if we uh, pull it down a little bit and take a wheel off? Oh yeah. All right, so we pulled the massive front wheel off, which is still a big wheel on one of these. Got these massive brakes. Stop tech. Yeah. look really nice. God, they're huge. That's bigger than most people's wheels, I feel like. Yeah, they're huge brakes. <laughs> and you can see inside we have all the nice bins that you have here for all the fuel system stuff. There's a bunch going on in here. Or ABS. Yeah. But pulling this off, is, if I could focus on this, there it is. See that? Titanium, rye tie on it. You guys yeah. made these. Yep, custom cut, man. Custom cut, that's a really cool. Tube of titanium and then CNC machine, cut them all out. So that's one of the little details that I didn't, I didn't notice until I was pulling the wheel off. I was like, yeah. yo, check this out. That's really cool. You guys even made the lug nuts. So yeah. quite a bit of stopping power here. Mm -hmm. You can see all the suspension, see how clean all the brake lines have been run. So you've replaced pretty much all of it, huh? Yeah, I mean, like, it's bigger than my <laughs> yeah. arm. They're massive, it's they good. They six pots, so. And how clean everything is. You can see done to how wide everything is on the side skirt and everything with the wheel off. Yeah. And how much room this is out. I mean, how big of a wheel that has to fit. It's deeper than my arm. Yeah, I mean, you can see kind of some of his craftsmanship under here with like, oh yeah. That's really cool. And how everything fits together. That had to be so much work. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It was like it was like five months of work for him. Like literally, it's just working on it for like five months, just trying to refine it. Yeah, it looks really good, man. We've got a pretty good look at it. Car is amazing. I'm a high five you on it. Good Thank job. You. Appreciate <clears throat> it, man. Thanks Anytime you want to come by, you want to bring us something else cool, we'll see. All right. Because I got to see more of this, but this car is just, it's super nice. Like Zach said, I was like, oh, this is one of the only Hondas I've seen that's like, this is amazing. Nice, thank you. Thank <clears throat> but it really you. is, you've done a really good job on it. I really appreciate it. Happy to have you over here. Yeah, maybe I'll have something new for you. Yeah. Crossing my fingers, something else, you know? Yeah. I wanna see what he's got up his sleeve. He's may have been talking about working on something else, so we'll maybe see that in the future. But thanks again for coming by. Thanks, Thanks man. for bringing us a sick car. Always appreciate it. I'm thanks hungry. for having me, It's dude. lunchtime. Let's go get, get some, some lunch. Food? Yeah, All right. I'm out. Later. Later. What is it? I don't know, but... I thought it was a tow hook block. Check, check it out, though. If you're a true Honda guy, you know what this is. <laughs>